He was on the federal bench for some of Brooklyn's highest profile mafia cases. He was also there during the Crown Height riots in 1991. To put it politely, Judge Frederick Block has a lot of stories to tell and colorful ones at that. He's done that in previous books and now he's got a new book. It's a novel but based on real characters in Brooklyn. It's called Race to Judgment. I recently sat down with the judge. First off, you know, I think you're part of a growing trend. You've been at it for a while, but more people uh, behind the bench seem more willing um, to put themselves out there in terms of both writings and opinions. For a long time, it seemed as if from the judges, we wanted to see them, and the only time we wanted to hear what they thought was when it came to a court decision. Why did you decide, obviously you have a prior book out already, uh, Disrobed, and you even had musical you wrote, and now in Race to Judgment. Why have you decided to, to put yourself out there? Well, you know, there are two schools of thought. Uh, traditionally, most judges really, you know, kept their peace, and they felt it was inappropriate to speak out to the public. And uh, But there's a more modern school of thought headed by Richard Posner. You may or may not know that name. Mm -hmm. Pretty profound judge out in Chicago. And he was a great believer that judges have a lot of information to share, that they really have a responsibility to the public, to let the public know a little bit about what we're all about, what we do, how we become a federal judge, what the system is all about. And I'm impressed by that. And I believe that, you know, we should share our knowledge with the public. The new book is Race to Judgment, and it's what you describe as reality fiction. You don't have to look too hard to see the parallels between real figures, real cases uh, in Brooklyn. And in fact, the protagonist really based off of the late Ken Thompson, the uh, the DA from Brooklyn. And, and you also talk about some high profile, profile cases with a wrongful conviction. Uh, DA Hines is mentioned in here. Even, uh, even Al Sharpton gets a, a nod as well. Uh, take people behind a little bit. Describe what the book's about here and why um, you thought Ken Thompson was not just significant to the book, but you even dedicated it to him as well. I had a bunch of high-profile cases that I thought had the seeds of making a very good story, one of which was this terrible, wrongful conviction of a fellow named Jabbar Collins, who was in jail for 16 years before he was acquitted. And uh, suddenly, what surfaced is a lot of these phony convictions in Brooklyn based upon uh, exculpatory material that was never handed over to the lawyers, and it became a scandal. Now, Ken Thompson who ran against Hines for the DA, campaigned on that case, which I had. And out of that, now, and still going strong, 25 wrongful convictions of people sitting in jail for decades. And it's become a real scandal. So the book is all about that. And it tracks the trials and tribulations of Ken Thompson's protagonist. He's Ken Williams in the book, an African-American civil rights leader who rises to upset the reigning DA whose office was responsible in the real world, unfortunately, for this spate of wrongful convictions. And you didn't spare yourself. Uh, people... Uh, may remember that Daily News headline, Judge Block, hey, that was you, and it wasn't a term of endearment uh, because they said, you know, when you question whether there was a, it was worth it to spend the time and the money here on a case in a federal drug trial that the guy eventually got life in prison for, uh, you even bring that one up in the book. The Daily News really uh, liked Judge Block, really, but they enjoyed me because uh, they thought, thought that a lot of the things I said and did were somewhat uh, newsworthy, I guess. So they coined the phrase Judge Blockhead, one reporter in particular, because I had spoken out against the death penalty some years ago. But the reality of it all is that I think that the public ought to know a little bit about what we do in the federal court. About a year and a half ago, I guess, maybe a little more, uh, you I think we're a little ahead of the curve in terms of when it came to sentencing, you moved for probation over jail time for a drug offense. And we've started to see in our courts that there's a re-examination when it comes to drug cases. What's the best use of both our prison system? Does treatment work better than incarceration in certain cases, et cetera? Have you seen kind of the pendulum shift here, especially in the last year, where nationally people are rethinking the best way to treat these cases? There's a lot of sentencing reform in the winds, and I hope it continues with the current administration. Uh, and sentencing has gone up and down throughout the years. It's the most difficult job of a federal court judge. Look, I'm a serious federal court judge. I'm happy to promote my book. 
when push comes to shove, my primary loyalty is to try to do the best job I can in terms of discharging my responsibilities. But yes, there has been something in the air. In the Eastern District of New York, the federal court where I work in Brooklyn, uh, we've had some innovative sentencing reforms to try to avoid people who have minor drug charges uh, from going to jail. We have 2.3 million people in jail. Many of them, if not 50 percent, are young African Americans there for drug crimes. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's changing in the right direction. We still have a long way to go. We criminalize war crimes in any country in the world. It's troublesome, uh, but uh, I think we're making some strides. Uh, and uh, I try to, to speak to that issue periodically. I think it's interesting for the folks who know uh, people uh, who try cases and known for a living said um, that race to judgment is a really fascinating read and it pulls back what they really see. And the author again, Judge Frederick Block. Your Honor, I appreciate the time and best of luck with the book. Well, thank you very much. And that's going to do it for us tonight. But before I let you go, a quick programming note. Monday, it will mark the 50th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision. We're going to have special coverage, including an interview with both journalist and author Linda Greenhouse and a lot more. Again, that uh, program you want to stay tuned for. All right. We will see you here tomorrow, 6 p.m. As always, I'll see you Thursday.